Today we're gonna work on automating all of the spice and go absolutely crazy with all of the new decorating options. Hello everyone, I'm Kibitz and welcome back to Satisfactory, where last time we unlocked the hyper tubes and did a variety of experiments with them and with other transport methods. But now that we have power, transport, and production going quite well, we have to prepare to expand and make the push to tiers five and six. But to do that, we need quite a lot of spicy stuff. We need 500 smart plating, 500 versatile framework, and 100 automated wiring. The problem here though, is that the automated wiring and these versatile framework things require tons and tons of steel. So we really gotta get to finishing up our steel foundry here. And fortunately, we got the alternate recipes we needed to finish off our steel factory. Oh yes, and that's not the only thing that's going on. There's a game update. So it's looking like things are looking a little, little bit different here. And also, check this out. We got our rocket back. Hooray. So now, whenever we unlock a new milestone, the rocket will go up and come down and move all around. It's great. I missed this. It's a shame we missed it through some of the earlier stages of the game, but we got it now. All is good in the world. Also, with the update, I'm pretty sure they added a bunch more foundations. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like this outer corner quarter pipe and this inverted outer corner quarter pipe. Man, say that five times fast. And a few other things, just for quality of life in here. Ooh, and there's a double ramp that's like half the size. Well, 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 a lot of quality of life things there. Very nice. But the most useful thing in this quick update is definitely this. Check this out. We can put down one conveyor pole like that. And then we can put the pipeline conveyor pole on top. Oh, that's changed too. So now that part used to be in the middle. I like it. Oh, but this is really nice because before you only could stack the pipeline poles and you couldn't stack them with the conveyor poles and it was really, really annoying. So that's super spicy. And that, along with all the extra foundations, is really nice. Oh, but hold up now, hold up now. There seem to be some map changes too. What are you doing there, stinky boy? I don't remember you being there. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's quartz. Oh, there's like custom quartz rocks now. Oh, that's kind of neat. But super quick, I want to investigate the old Mr. Stinky Stink. Is there something new there? Is it shiny? Oh, <gasps> it is shiny, my friend. My precious friend. I will save you one day, but not today. Once we get the main factory going in tiers five and six, we'll get them. But for now, one step at a time, let's figure out the steel. So before we get started here, super quick recap, but we made these steel engines, which is just a super compact foundry design. And each of these has six foundries in them. And the six foundries times six is 18 and 18 foundries times 45 parts per minute equals 810 steel per minute from the system. So 810 divided by three is 270. So we have three 270 lines coming out the back here and they go up to all the extra floors. With the first floor being steel pipe production and the second floor is steel beam production. And then the third floor is Oh wait, yeah, <laughs> there is no third floor. Cause we wanted to get the alternate recipes to see what we do next. Because the vanilla recipe for encased industrial beams is steel beams and concrete. But we're gonna be switching this up. Because now we have the encased industrial pipe alternate, which uses pipes instead of the beams. And seven steel pipes is a lot less steel than four steel beams. And because I didn't know if that alternate existed or not anymore, I left one of our steel lines just available so we could use it for the encased beams. Because for sure, one of the steel lines will be for steel beams, the other will be for pipes. Now this one can be used for the encased industrial beams and things will be all good. So number one, we gotta clean up the garbage here. 
All of this was just to make a nice little stockpile of encased industrial beams for us. But now I think we are past that point. Sad thing is, we're also feeding all the encased industrial beams into our ticket machine. So this is gonna slow down considerably. Well, then again, we have plenty of tickets, so not a big deal. So everything is cleaned up and we have a brand new floor to play with. So it is time to figure out what the heck is going on, brother. And it's not gonna be good, I bet. Because check this out. The alternate recipe for these encased industrial pipes uses 28 steel pipes per minute. Why? Why 28? Why not 30? Why? <laughs> Just 28 is such a weird number to work with because now check this out. We get a constructor boy in steel pipes. You only make them at 20 parts per minute. So 20 and then 28, like what? What's going on there, brother? Oh, and then concrete. Well, tch. concrete, who cares? We have a pier node over to our right, and there's a bunch of pure concrete nodes over behind us. So I, I actually don't care about the concrete. Uh, it'll be our X factor. We'll fill it in. Uh, what we really need to figure out, though, is a good ratio between this 28 steel pipes per minute and the 20 parts per minute that are made in the constructor here, because steel is what matters. Okay, but I did some math on it, and it seems that a good ratio between pipe constructors and the encased industrial pipe assemblers is five to seven. So you'd have five assemblers making the encased industrial pipes and seven constructors making the steel pipes. And that's because 28 times five equals 140, and 140 divided by 20 equals seven. So that's why we'd have the five assemblers and the seven constructors. So that's the ratio we're gonna work with, except we're going to take it to the next level. And instead of making five assemblers, we're gonna double it to 10. So we're gonna need 14 constructors for steel pipes. But then there comes the problem of the steel ingots themselves. Because 30 times 14 equals, oof. <laughs> Anti-oof, it equals 420. <laughs> Yo, dude. Good memes. Ah, but it's not exactly a good meme because we only have 270 belts. So we have 270 steel coming to this floor. So in order to make this system work, we're gonna have to steal some steel, I suppose you could say, from the floor beneath. So we'll convert quite a few of these constructors over. In fact, we'll convert five of them. And then the rest of the steel beams will go into the versatile framework stuff. But we'll figure that all out later. Step one, encased industrial beams. We need a good ratio with them. So to get things started here, we'll just build our first constructors. A 270 line can go into nine constructors perfectly. So that'll be nine of our constructors. And then we'll go downstairs and we'll fetch the rest of the steel pipes we need from those constructors. And then after that, I guess we'll look into making another floor for the assemblers. Alrighty, so the new steel pipe constructors are all put together, looking good, looking snazzy. And then, what we have ended up doing is we split the two groups into groups of seven. So there's seven constructors here that combine onto one line. So that's 140 for five assemblers upstairs. And then there's two here which will combine with five constructors downstairs to make another 140 line. Easy peasy. So we just gotta add in the next floor and see if we can get our 14 assemblers rocking and rolling. However, I don't think we're gonna have enough space. That's gonna be an oof. That's already three. <laughs> There's no way. Okay, so a little bit of a change of plans. I'm thinking maybe we just build out this way. Yeah. Then we can make this kind of like an L-shaped building. That's probably what we're gonna have to do. We can do a little bit of load balancing over there or over here, and then have the assemblers going off in this direction. And then uh, it's gonna look a little weird beneath this platform, cause it'll be empty space, but I'm sure we can find some way to decorate it. So we'll worry about that later. Yeah, this ended up being the right decision here. So now this also gives the building kind of a cool shape to it. It's not just like, a box with machines in it. Now it's like a T with machines in it. 
Much more spicy, much more spicy indeed. Also, managed to get two rows of seven assemblers, so load balancing should be pretty simple. Again, it's seven constructors to the five. Wait. Wait. We needed 10 assemblers. We didn't need 14. Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't need to do any of this! Ah! Ah! <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? Oh, Fine. We're keeping this. I don't care. We've already built it. We're here now. We're too deep! <laughs> anyway... Yeah. The seven uh, constructors to the five assemblers will work out really well. And hey, look at that! We have room for load balancing if we needed to do it over here. Woo! <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, yeah, this should be pretty simple. The concrete, I haven't even measured it out. We're making like 270 concrete per minute. I'm sure that's enough. We'll overflow that, and then again, the seal will be super easy to load balance. Oh, but wait a second, wait a second. There's not gonna be enough space here at all to get all of these um, mergers and splitters in here. Okay, I made a bit more room then. We'll move and groove things, we'll make it work. Pretty much though, this is the design. Okay, so we got a little bit of space here, and we're doing things a little weird. It's not exactly the load balancing method. It's kind of like a hybrid, or not really even a hybrid. It's just an efficient way to do the overflow method. So we have the perfect amount of materials going in from this side and from this side, and then they merge together into the middle here. So both sides kind of overflow rather quickly, and things are pretty efficient. It takes a lot less space, a lot less time, and should work just fine. Oh yeah, did I mention that this method is gonna look a lot better as well? Cause oh bud, does it look spicy. So it turns out we do have enough concrete by the way. We have about 270 per minute, and we need about 200 per minute, so that's all fine. I don't care about wasting or like overflowing with concrete. Not a big deal. Steel is the meal. That rhymed. But anyway, there we go. We are making encased industrial beams in a professional sense now. Instead of just, uh, <laughs> the one machine with like a ton of overclocks. So four times 10 is 40 encased industrial beams per minute. It's a good starter number, I'd say. And yeah, everything ends up just going over to this bin here because we have nothing else to do with it right now. It will go here, it will sit here, then we'll advance and check and find a better purpose for it. Probably we'll have to use it a lot in heavy modular frames if that recipe is the same. Oh yes, and in our Mark IV belts. So yeah, good we're making a big old stockpile right now. Yeah, yeah, oh yes, here it all comes slowly but surely. You know what, honestly, next time we see this bin, I bet it's gonna be full, almost certainly. Ah, but a job well done. A job well done. But we have more to do. We can't just sit down, can't just relax. We gotta move, we gotta groove, we have tech and wild things to create. So, now that we have that figured out, the rest of the steel we have being produced in this factory is free for whatever. And that whatever is going to be the space elevator stuff. So smart plating, we have a temporary setup for that, so that's kind of just fine. Versatile framework now, that's a little bit spicy. Because we need modular frames, which actually we're good on, we're making 20 per minute of that. But then we need 12, or no, 30 steel beams per minute. Now that is scary. And worse off, we're using steel from our steel beam production to make pipes now for this contraption. So, yeah. It's gonna be a little weird. It's gonna be a little spooky spooky. So how many steel beams are we making right now? Do, 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 do. We just have, <laughs> we just have four machines for this, perfect. Each of them taking 30 per minute, making 7.5 per minute. Oh yes, because I wanted it to line up with the steel pipe production. So yeah, they're all running on 50%. So 7.5 times four. <laughs> Seven <laughs> really? 7.5 times 4 is 30. Really? What a good meme. 
So we have the perfect amount to make the versatile framework. We just need to bring over the modular frames. Wow. Incredibly convenient. Oh my goodness, even more so convenient. We have all this empty space underneath this platform. I wonder what we could do here. Hmm? It's kind of obvious we're going to make ourselves the space elevator stuff. So we can only build one machine. So it'll be kind of tiny, tiny. But at least it fills out this space just a little bit. We'll just have a floor here. A machine there. And we connect the belts in behind. And just like that, we are starting to produce our versatile framework. So we just need a cool 500 of them, and then we're good! Hooray! Only 500. Only take like... Wait. 100 minutes? Yeah, it's like under two hours. Perfect! Very nice. Very spicy. Very cool. That is gonna take a little while. <laughs> The frames have quite the distance to travel, but they'll get here eventually. So we're all good. Look at them. They're beautiful. Makes me want to set up a sound stage. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Alrighty though. That leads us to the next spicy meatball. The automated wiring. Mm -hmm -hmm. So 50 cable per minute. That's a lot, but I think we got that. And then 2.5 stators per minute. So that's wire and steel pipes. Hmm. Wait, do I have an extra floor of steel pipes? We need a new floor for steel pipes. Then we took a bunch of steel from our steel beam production for the encased beams. So I should have a floor underneath here. <laughs> yes, I do. That's all for steel pipe construction. Oh boy. So that's 180 steel pipes per minute. And then what was the other thing we needed for the wire? The automated wire? Oh yes. It was just the cable. Oh no, 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 no. Wait, no, no. We needed just the normal wire. And then we combine things with the cable. Okay, I got you. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, this is why we really need a main base. We have like our steel over here, and then we have everything else way over there. It's inconvenient. <laughs> Alrighty though, let's just bring this over then, and we'll set up something temporary. And don't worry guys, we're gonna be setting up our main base very soon. So all this temporary nonsense will be dealt with. Right on, so now all the steel pipes are at our starter base mark two, and I simply plug them in, to a very temporary setup. So the steel pipes over there, we got some wire. I don't even know the amount of wire. <laughs> and those two things combine into stators. The stators go into the next assembler with some cable. And guess what? We're making automated wiring. 2.5 per minute. So yeah, it's just simply plugging stuff in. And there we go. And after a while, we'll get the hundred we need? Yeah, the hundred we need, and we're fine. Whoa, baby, it's so thick. That's some thick wire and bud. Look at that. What on earth are we doing with that up in the space elevator? Who knows? But we got it, and that should be done with un momento. So we gotta wait on that, and the versatile framework, and in a little while, we'll have our space elevator stuff ready to go. And with all that rocking and rolling at a snail's piece, uh, we have a bit of time to kill. And what we will be doing is unlocking all of the decorating tools in the coupon shop. So let's print them out. Thank you very much. And let's start decorating some things. Now that we're done the steel foundry area, we can actually make that like a proper good looking setup. Ooh, and same with our coal plants too. It's gonna be spicy. Anyway though, we got 40 tickets. So shopping spree time? You better believe it. Wall conveyors? Yes, all of them. Doors? You better believe it. Windows? Ho 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 ho. I've waited long to get these windows. Oh, they look so cool. Then attachments? We can get the wall mounts now. We already, oh, is this new? 
hyper tube wall attachments. Ooh, and wall hole. So we can go through walls with the hyper tube. Oh my God, everything gets better. Uh, same with the pipes, power pole mark ones, sure. Just give me the options. Foundation pillars. <laughs> I've waited patiently for you, my friend. Inverted ramp pack. I thought we had this. But I guess this is just like an extended version. Sounds good. Walkways, you better believe it. Stairways for no reason. And then uh, we're not gonna buy any statues yet. Equipment, we'll leave. And parts, we don't need. So, oh no. No, no. This costs 55 tickets. I don't have 55 tickets. Brother, why? We remove you, uh, Mark 1, we already have the Mark 2s. No. No, we need nine more tickets. Wait, you know what? There's something I've been wanting to try. Uh, we'll leave that there. Is it still in the cart? No, we'll have to get that later. Okay, there's something I wanna try though. We might be able to get like a quadrillion tickets in like literally five seconds here. So, we went on some hard drive hunts, on some live streams, and check this out. We have five super computers! So, if we just grab two of those, maybe a couple of these guys too, we should be able to get like an insane amount of points. Like, supercomputers, radio control units, these are so freaking advanced to, uh, compared to where we're at, they should be worth a billion points. So, let's check on our ticket count. Oh, well that's convenient. We'll wait for this next ticket, then we'll throw some supercomputers in here. All right, so we need 1,090,000 points. Is that a million? Yep, that's a million. So, how much is one supercomputer worth? It better be a million. Look at that. It's so cool. That's a million points if I've ever seen it. All right, so. <laughs> oh no, oh, interesting. That seemed to be about 100,000 points. That's not a million though. Oh wait, we got a whole brand new ticket and then some. Wow. So that's worth a lot. Did we read that right? One more. Oh my gosh, the radio control units are even more complex. Oh my god, we're rich. We're rich beyond our wildest dreams. Swimming in tickets. Yep, it's over a million points. We got another coupon just from that. Oh brother. Go, radio control unit. Go forth and bring us great tickets. I can't, I can't imagine if that would be a million tickets. There's no way, right? Is it? Not, I think that was 900,000. I think so. Check one more time here. Yeah, it seems to be around 900,000 points for that. Wow, so that means you could just run around the map and gather up all of the loot around drop pods and get like a billion tickets right in the beginning of the game. Oh, wow. Yeah, we gotta go on another hard drive hunt and you better believe I'm gonna be praying for some super computers. Cause dang, that's crazy. But I'm pretty sure we still need more tickets, don't we? Yeah, we need four more tickets. Unbelievable. Well, and let's just throw in some other junk. We got some heat sinks. These should be worth a lot. That's like tier six, right? Oh yeah. It's looking like they're worth about 100,000 each. Maybe 500,000. I don't know. A lot of points. That is flying down, or it was flying down. Okay, cool. What about computers now? 300,000. Okay, that's a lot more. What? Why are computers worth so much? Oh, they're not worth a lot. We just sent them in really, really fast. So that was like 30 computers at once. Okay. Cool. But we still need another two tickets. So, redo control units. Be gone. Gib tickets, please. Easily done. And those are the rest of the tickets. Very good. For a clean 50. And after this little shopping spree, we're not gonna really need tickets for a very, very, very long time. So, let's get all the things again. 
And that's buy them all. Railings, walls, oh my. So many cool things, I don't even know. Oh boy, oh boy. Walkways after a long last. Man, you don't know what you got till it's gone. I miss these so much. Ah, the fences, huge. Foundations, the pillars, the pillar top, the pillar middle. <laughs> I'm wildly excited. Uh, let's find a platform here. All right, so we have the pillar beast. Oh my gosh. Oh, we're gonna be using this so much for everything. The pillar middle, obviously. So this is the modular thing, the pillar top. Very nice. Can we have that down here? Yes, we can. So it can be like a podium too. Wait. Ooh, and that looks pretty cool. Super spicy. So many things we can do here. What else did we unlock? There's so many things now. We already have the frames. We already have the glass foundations. The inverted ramp pack. So that'll be really nice for detailing. For sure. And then walls. All of the walls. So these used to be default, but we can just build conveyor belts through walls now, obviously. And doorways, pretty standard, at least from what we're used to. And then, the spies. These ones, specifically. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Now if that isn't like factory style glass, I don't know what is. Whoa! Got the big windows too. Super spicy! And they don't cost all that much either. That's good. I thought they might cost quartz because we used a mod that had windows. And that cost quartz and that was like, oh no. And nah, everything's all cheap. So massive steel windows, easily done. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, that might be my favorite here. That's so futuristic, it's so neat. Ah. Oh. Oh. The decisions to be made insane and I think that is about it then where are the walls oh here they are the pipeline whole things oh so we just place this on the wall okay so it's not like its own little wall thing so it's not like the conveyor walls this is actually extremely modular that's good to know pipeline support so we can just throw these on the walls too at any height hmm Hmm, it's pretty good. Same thing with the belt mounts. That's nice. There is one thing I have to check though. Way back in the day, whenever you had a wall thing like this and you want to connect it up to the wall mount, it never worked out too well. <gasps> but it's changed. Oh my gosh. This is a little thing that has bugged me for so long. So long. The future is here. The turn is a perfect 90 degrees onto the mount thing. There's no, there used to be like a bulge there and it always looks so dumb. But now we are in the promised land, brother. The promised land where everything is spicy and everything is good. <laughs> everything is possible. Wait, 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 wait. Oh my gosh, we can do this with the hypertubes as well. The hypertubes can go through walls. I'm getting pretty riled up. I'm not gonna lie. Wait, wait a second. Wait, we could have a door. And then on the other side of the door, we can have the hypertube going through. Where is it? Oh my god, it's happening. Everything's happening so fast. I'm overwhelmed. I shouldn't have done this all at once. Oh, I'm freaking out. I gotta breathe. One second. Okay, seconds over. Okay, well. Conveniently, we're done our steel factory, so we can go absolutely nuts with all this stuff and decorate it. We have lived in trash for so long, but now we will have a beacon of hope. One pristine looking build amongst the temporary nonsense. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh my gosh, but the steel factory already looks so good. Like with the extra floors we added on, the tower looks pretty nice too. Whoa. We can do something cool with the hyper tube. Oh, and with the steel foundries at the bottom. Oh my gosh. This is gonna be such an epic build. But first off, let's deal with the face of it. Just this big front area. 
We have all the options in the world. So let's see what to do. I think number one, we want to add something reinforcing onto the bottom here. So we'll start with something simple, just these gray walls here. And then we can add in these frames above to make it look like there's a little bit more going on. So it's like supporting the rest of the build. Ahaha, but with the steel engines down there, there's a center. So it's like one, two, three. Meaning we can put some pillars in here. Make things look hyper spicy. So that will go there. We'll flip the pillar up over there. Put one in the middle. I'm really happy that worked. Okay, and we can have that in the center of every steel foundry. And hopefully that didn't end up looking like hot garbage. No, no it did not. In fact, it kind of like highlights the importance of the steel engines there. I like it. I like it a lot. Do we continue that all the way up? Mm, that might be a bit excessive. Just a little bit. But it's a decent start to the supports. And from there, things get a lot easier too. Because now we can just build like a normal building. Pretty much anyway. And just add in a bunch of glass everywhere. And with that and a little bit of detailing, we got a pretty good looking factory. I gotta say, for our first run through with all the new stuff, it's not bad. Especially for a brick. But yeah, I added in a lot of details. Like we have some balconies here and there. We have some uh, hyper tubes moving and grooving. And I changed up the design of the support so it looks a little bit better here. And overall, I'm pretty pleased with this. It kind of looks like a Soviet era kind of factory, but that's okay. It's a neat design. And actually, its best angle is from the side over here. Because there's kind of like one main support beam that goes right into the ground, and then the rest of the building kind of like leans on it. Or like sprouts from it. So we have like the extra ramps going up there, widening the building. Same thing within the back. And a cool little pattern to boot. Yeah, it looks pretty neat. I like it. I like it a lot. Also, <laughs> um, I tried something a little different for this back portion here. I did not know what to do to bring all the floors down to the ground. And also, I had made this design and I was like, well that's staying. So I just tried to do something kind of new. Kind of interesting. And I made this like mega support pillar with the other support pillars inside it. Just to add a little bit of depth. And yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It kind of looks like a command post. Only thing is, it doesn't fit well with the rest of the building. Well, that's okay. We're messing around with things. We're learning new methods. And we're having a lot of fun building new stuff. Ooh. Ooh, whoa. And speaking of messing with new stuff. Oh my goodness. The wall mounts for the hyper tubes are so good! You just put them anywhere you want, and they go around through the wall, and it's like the easiest thing in the world. It looks fantastic as well. And then we got vertical power with the power plugs as well. Like, my goodness! My gracious, I love it. And probably one of the nicer things, too, is you notice that the hyper tubes aren't going to every floor. That's because they go to every second floor. So I'll show you an example here. We go way up here, skewed over this way, and here we are, right next to what should be a steel beam bin, but it's a little busy at the moment. And here's what I've done with the two floor method. The uh, hyper tube takes us to this top portion, and then we have a bounce pad just down here. So we can jump down here, we can mess around, and then when we want to leave, we just take the bounce pad back to the hyper tube. And then the same deal for the top floor as well. So we just go up, we go in, and here we are. I did a little bit of uh, interior work as well, so we can kind of run around, look over things, say hi to all the concrete and production, which is stopped, because already that large storage container is full of encased industrial beams. So that's awesome. But then the only other thing is I couldn't figure out what to do with the roof just yet. So we're just gonna kind of leave it be for now, and I'll figure it out later. Maybe we can put like a radio tower or something up there. However, I am happy to leave this here for now, and I think that's gonna be all for today's episode as well. So if you guys enjoyed, please remember to leave a like, and I hope to see you in the next video. But have a fantastic rest of your day, and bye bye <laughs>